my name is Kitty. Behind the camera there, that's Jenny. Hello! And we are at the University of Guelph Arboretum today. And we're back again with another video to help bring a little bit more nature fun into your life. And today, we thought that we'd talk a little bit about plant defenses because we are surrounded by all sorts of different wonderful plants. And unfortunately for plants, they are very delicious to a lot of different animals. But of course, nothing wants to get munched on. So a lot of these plants, they've evolved a whole bunch of different ways to help protect themselves from the animals that want to eat them. These can be maybe indirect defenses, like maybe recruiting help, or uh, chemical defenses, like chemicals that make them yucky to eat, or even uh, physical defenses that just make it tricky for animals to get to them. But either way, we are gonna start off with this plant right here. This is a trembling aspen tree. And all along here are trembling aspen trees. And if you actually come closer and take a good close look at the leaves here, you'll notice that the leaf stalks, they're actually flat. And that means that if a little breeze were to come along, all of these leaves, they're gonna shake just like this. So that's actually what earned it the name trembling aspen when the wind moves through them all the leaves kind of tremble and in and of itself trembling aspen is a really really cool plant these guys they can actually spread underground so if you look all around me and see all these individual trees they're not necessarily different individuals. What happens is these trees can actually all be connected underground and they can all be genetically identical. And that means that they are all part of the same organism, which is pretty spectacular. So that would make it one really, really big tree. And because of its ability to do this, actually one of the oldest and one of the heaviest organisms on the entire planet is a trembling aspen, which is pretty fantastic. And not only that, but this is what we call an early succession plant. So they're actually kind of the first ones to poke their heads out of the ground after an area has been disturbed or a forest is spreading outwards. And as they grow up and grow leaves and kind of shade out the area underneath them, then that paves the way for other plants to come in like other tree species or other uh, understory plants like wildflowers and things like that. So they're a really, really important tree in a forest to have around. But of course, these leaves, they look pretty delicious to me. I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of different animals might want to take a bite right out of those leaves. And of course the trembling aspen, they don't want that. So they have a couple of tricks up their sleeve. And one of my absolute favorite tricks of all time is that at the base of the trembling aspen leaves, it's really tough to see because they can be really, really tiny. But at the base of the leaves around here, they have what we call extra floral nectaries. So these are tiny, tiny glands that give off a really sweet sugary liquid. And this sweet sugary nectar, it actually acts as payment to hire on insect bodyguards. What happens is insects will be attracted to the nectar from these extra floral nectaries. Uh, but of course not the insects that want to take a bite out of the, of the leaves though, because the extra floral nectaries actually attract insects that are predators or parasitoids. And those insects will actually protect this tree from other leaf munching insects. So they're gonna either pred uh, predate those leaf munching insects or parasitize them, which is pretty awesome. So these guys have kind of hired insect bodyguards. And not only that, but the leaves, they are full of chemicals like tannins and phenolytic glycosides that make it really yucky for a lot of insects to eat. So it can deter a lot of caterpillars. It's even been known to slow down the growth of things like certain butterflies. And it can also sometimes help to track or deter larger mammals like deer and things like that as well. So this tree has all sorts of tricks up its sleeve to protect itself from animals that want to take a bite out of it, which is pretty cool. But of course, this is not the only plant with special defenses against uh, leaf munching animals. So we're going to go and take off and take a look at another plant that has a different strategy to protect themselves. tree 
is called Colorado Blue Spruce. And spruce trees have a really, really special trick up their sleeve to help protect them against different things. So if you take a good close look at uh, these needles here, if you were to actually break off one of these needles and take a sniff, it actually has a really distinctive smell. I actually quite like the smell. I think it smells very nice. But this smell comes from volatile compounds or special chemicals inside of a substance called resin that is stored inside these needles. And resin, it's kind of similar to sap. But when we think of sap, we are talking about a liquid that travel all throughout a plant to help deliver nutrients all throughout the plants. But resin is actually a semi-solid substance that a plant like this spruce would produce uh, as a defense mechanism. So the resin inside of this needle is actually to protect the tree. And what happens is this resin, it's stored inside special ducts that run all along the length of the needle. And these ducts are under a lot of pressure. So if a maybe little caterpillar crawls along and decides to take a munch out of one of these needles, it's actually gonna break open the needle and then break open the duct inside. And what happens is the resin inside of these pressurized ducts is gonna shoot out and stick all over the insect's mouth. And what happens is this resin then starts to coagulate and get really hard and sticky. And it's gonna glue that insect's mouth parts shut so it's no longer gonna be able to take another bite. That's actually how this plant defends itself against animals that wanna take a bite out of its needles. And under the right conditions, then this resin, it can actually solidify and fossilize and become amber. So that's actually where amber came from, which is pretty cool. But if we come and take a closer look at the trunk of the tree here, you might see some gluey stuff uh, dripping down the side of the tree. And some of this is actually resin. See what happens is if this tree gets injured on the trunk here, not only does resin protect its needles from getting munched on, but it can also help protect its wounds. So if it gets a wound on the trunk of a tr uh, tree here, or if one of its limbs, one of its branches gets broken off, then it leaves a big gaping wound and the tree doesn't want that. So it starts to ooze out and seep out resin. And this resin is gonna cover that entire wound and it's actually gonna act as a liquid band-aid to protect the tree. Kind of like you putting a band-aid on yourself if you get a little scrape. This tree creates its own band-aid, which is pretty awesome. So resin has a couple of different rules. Not only does it deter insects from munching on the needles and other animals from munching on the needles, but it also helps protect the tree when it gets wounds on its body, which is pretty awesome. Now, of course, that's not the only tree we have to show you. We have one more special plant to uh, kind of talk to you guys about with its really awesome defenses. So I think I'm going to turn it over to Jenny to tell you all about it. Yeah, so guys, we've talked about indirect defenses so far, and we've talked about a chemical defense with this spruce, but let's talk about physical defenses. Complete that trifecta. So if you want to follow me to our last plan, we can talk about that. Alright, so we're at this plant right here, and this is probably a very familiar plant for a lot of people, probably more so when it's blooming, but this is a species of rose. And as the old saying goes, every rose has its thorn. So roses have very special physical defense in form of these sharp pointy bits all over its branches. In fact, if you guys come a little closer and have a closer look, we can probably see that all over here. So all these sharp pointy structures all over the branches makes it really hard for bigger predators like maybe deer or things like that to bite down these plants because it would hurt a lot to get a face full of these sharp, sharp bits. But the trick is they're not thorns like everybody thinks. These things on the roses are actually what's called prickles. And prickles are these sharp, hard structures that are formed from the epidermis or basically the skin of the plant. Whereas things like thorns and spines, they're 
kind of similar. There are these sharp structures, helps deter herbivory, but they're formed from modified leaves or branches, respectively, um, of different plants. So they have vascular tissue in them. And that makes them a lot sturdier and harder than these prickles would be. In fact, in the past, people used to use plant spines as nails. They were so, so sturdy, which is kind of cool. So now that we've kind of busted that myth, we can actually maybe head on over to a very close by plant to have an example of what an actual thorn looks like. So follow me over here, guys. here at one of my personal favorite trees in the whole arboretum and this is a honey locust tree and honey locusts have thorns all over them you'll notice that these trees have these big giant spiky thorns all over them um, though there are varieties of cultivars that people have bred that are thornless not as cool in my opinion but these thorns serve the same purpose as the prickles on the rose it prevents herbivory from animals Specifically for the honey locusts, it helped prevent animals from pushing this tree over to get to its seed pods way up high before they're ripe and ready to fall to the ground. Which seems kind of weird if you think about it, because today, because this is a native tree, today we don't really have any native animals that would be able to do this regardless. So things like even deer, they would probably be able to put their muzzle right around the thorns on this tree, wouldn't really be able to push it down. So the thorns on honey locusts are actually initially evolved to protect itself from a long extinct animal, the woolly mammoth. So mammoths, when mammoths used to roam Ontario, would try to get to the seed pods on these honey locust trees before they were ripe by pushing the tree over. And the tree obviously doesn't want this. It wants to stay upright. It doesn't want to get damaged, but also wants those seed pods to be eaten when they're ripe and ready to be dispersed and grow into new trees. So it co-evolved with these mammoths to grow these big thorns to prevent that from happening. So that's pretty cool. Plants have defenses all over the place in all sorts of different categories. So definitely next time you're out and adventuring, have a closer look at the plants around you and maybe think about how they're protecting themselves from predators or herbivores around them, even if they were from way, way long ago. Thanks so much for joining us, guys.